As I record this in April of 2024, we're in the middle of a very hotly contested election. So I want to talk about, uh, this is a actual real example, a real poll from April of 2024. And I have changed the names and blanked out the names. Candidate A leads candidate B by one point among registered voters nationwide, 46% to 45% in the widely covered New York Times Siena poll, a gain from February when candidate A led by four. So it looks good for candidate A, but then there is this line. The poll of 1,059 registered voters has an overall margin of error of plus minus 3%, 3.3%. So what does that mean when it has a margin of error? Margin of error is the accuracy of a sample survey based on two key factors, margin of error and the confidence level. And confidence level is something that would be talked about later. The margin of error tells you the interval in which the result will fall relative to the real population value. Statisticians have found that the large populations, the margin of error, for a random sample size n can be approximated by the formula margin of error equals plus or minus, and it's hard to see there, but down here it's margin of error equals plus or minus one over the square root of n times 100, because that will change the percent, the decimal to a percent where n is the sample size. So it's very uh, unlikely that you're gonna be able to conduct a poll by asking all 100, 100 million voters or so uh, who they think is going to be the president or who they want to vote for president. So more often than not, a poll will ask about a thousand people um, their preferences. And those polls are based only on the choices of a thousand people that have been randomly, randomly called, usually by some sort of polling service. So the way they find the margin of error is you take one divided by square root of n, and then multiply that times 100, and that is the margin of error. So before we go back to our real life example, we'll go to example three down here. A survey is conducted to determine how many people will vote for the school presidential candidate. The result of the 500 students surveyed showed that 62% will vote for candidate B. Find the margin of error. So again, the margin of error is found you can see the formula up there. Is plus or minus one over the square root of n, and then you would take that times 100 to change it to a percent. So we'll take one divided by the square root of 500. So that's something you would definitely need to do on your calculator. So when you take one divided by the square root of 500, approximately, 0.044, 4 I should say, 0.044. And if I wanted to change that to a decimal, you can multiply that times 100, but the way you multiply times 100 is you move the decimal two to the right, which means we have a margin of error of plus or minus 4.4%. So what that means is, is that if we add to this 62% that is circled up there, that margin of error, if we add 4.4% to that, so 62 plus 4.4% would give us 66.4%. And if we take that 4.4 and subtract it from 62%, we get 57.6%. So what that means is, is that in the actual election, it is likely that candidate B will get anywhere between the 57.6% to 66.4%. That is the likely possible percents in the actual election. So since we know the candidate's gonna get at least 57.6% of the vote, then he or she is definitely, most definitely gonna win this election, at least according to the polls, because even the margin of error shows that she is gonna get over half the vote. If we go back to our real life uh, election that's going on up here with candidate A and B, we have a very close race. We have 46% going for candidate A and 45% going for candidate B. But notice it has a 3.3% margin of error. And again, that would be found by taking one divided by the square root of the number of registered voters that was polled, which is 1,059. And that would be approximately 
0.033, which would be 3.3%. So let's go ahead and find the intervals in which candidate A and candidate B will most likely have in the actual election, according to this poll. So with candidate A, who is leading with 46%? Candidate A could possibly get 3.3% higher than that to earn as much as 49.3%, or candidate B could have 3.3% subtracted from that 43, 46%, and that would be 42.7%. Whereas, this again, this is candidate A. Candidate B has got 45% of the vote, so it could be 3.3% higher as high as 48.3% of the vote, or it could be 3.3% lower, which would be as low as 41.7% of the vote. So what you can see here is that candidate B could possibly get 48.3% of the vote, whereas candidate B could actually go as low as 42.7% of the vote. So even though it says in the headline that candidate A is leading candidate B, because the lead is within the margin of error of 3.3%, it is possible that candidate A is not actually leading and may not win this election. Candidate B has a very strong chance of winning this election. So whenever you read about any types of polls, presidential polls, governor polls, mayor polls, whatever polls that you see, you have to consider that there is going to be a margin of error and things that and polls that are extremely close like this one actually means it's what's called a dead heat. It's virtually a tie and we won't know who can win and you really can't go out and claim that somebody's leading the polls because the lead is so small it's still within the margin of error. You can also go the other direction we can take and try to figure out how many we need to poll to earn uh, be within a certain margin of error. You are a member of a research team that is going to run a simulation. The simulation needs to result in an adequate sample size and margin of error for each trial. Find the sample of size you should use to, in your simulation for a margin of error plus or minus 3%. So what that means is, is that since margin of error, again, the formula for margin of error, is 1 divided by the square root of n. And we want a margin of error of plus or minus 3%. So plus or minus 3%, that is 0 0.03 as a decimal, because again, if it's 3%, I move the decimal 2 to the left to change it to a decimal. So it's 0 0.03. So 0 0.03 is going to equal 1 over the square root of n. And we're trying to solve for n. So to solve that for n, I'm going to multiply both sides times the square root of n. This will eliminate the equation of the fractions. So that will give me 0 0.03 times the square root of n equals 1. I will divide both sides by the 0 0.03. And that will give me the square root of n equals 1 divided by the square, 0 0.03. And that equals 33.3. 3 repeating, and then to get rid of the square root sign, I'm going to square both sides, and by squaring both sides, that will give me that cancels that out. That'll give me the n equals whatever 33.3 repeating is. If you left it on your calculator, you should just be able to square that. And you get about a 1,111.1 repeating. And if you were to round that, you would get about 1,111. So that is 1,111. That will give you a margin of error of about 3%. It's actually going to be a little bit less than 3% since we rounded down. If we wanted to make sure, or excuse me, a little more than 3% since we rounded down. If we wanted to guarantee it was actually less than 3%, we should round up to 1,112. But I would accept the answer of 1,111 because you would be rounding down on this one. 
Part B, determine the sample size that has a margin of error of plus or minus 10%. Before you view this, you should try to do this one on your own by using the last example as a guide. So the margin of error, again, would be equal to one over the square root of n. So we're looking for a margin of error of 10%. So that is 0.1 is a decimal. So 0.1 equals the square root of one over the square root of n. We will square both sides, or excuse me, take square root of n times both sides. I was getting ahead of myself. So that will cancel those out. And that'll give me 0.1 square root of n equals one. I will divide both sides by 0.1. When you divide both sides by 0.1, you get the square root of n equals 10, and then finish it up by squaring both sides. Squaring cancels out square roots, and that will give you n equals exactly 100, no rounding necessary on this one. So for a margin of error of 10%, you should have 100 in the sample size.